Hi, uh, my name's Karina Kennedy and I'm a nutritional therapist and herbalist and uh, I was talking to a number of clients recently and they were saying it's quite difficult to make interesting um, varying kind of meals for the week. So I decided to um, do a demonstration and just show you how easy it can be and just to use five basic components for five different meals but you can use the same ones all week. So the first one is this one here so it's just a really really simple tomato and onion salsa so all that is is basically your tomatoes and onions cut up really um, kind of chunky enough but put through some coriander and some lemon juice and that's that then I've done some roast vegetables so I did these earlier these are really easy to do and you've got carrots you've got peppers you've got mushrooms a bit of garlic some onions aubergine sweet potato Literally all I did was that with those is I chopped them up and then I put some rapeseed oil on them and Then I put them in the oven for about an hour and a half um, The next is a soup. I made this soup and I've frozen it and so it was just to show that you can um, Make stuff from fresh you can freeze it and then take it out and use it So the soup is going to be something that we're going to add all of this to later on um, and then you've got some rice, some simple basmati rice. So what I did with the rice was I always soak the rice first for about 20 minutes in cold water and then literally drain it off and then put more water in again and boil it up for about 20 minutes. I normally bring it to the boil and once it gets to the boil I turn it down and put the lid on and let it steam and it, it fluffs up nicely. These are just some green beans. And then here we've just got some avocado that's got some lemon juice on it. This is literally two tins of uh, chickpeas. And what I did with these is I drained off the chickpeas and then I added some of this. It's called Ras Al Anu. Um, it's, you can get it in Tesco, it's made up like that. It's a Moroccan blend that's normally used in things like tagines. So I just literally uh, poured some of that over the chickpeas and again put those in the oven for about an hour and they dry up so they're kind of crispy and then the last thing then is I've got a few big mushrooms there so I'll show you what I'm going to do with those later and two tins of tomatoes so we're going to do this all the way through so you can follow through I'm um, going to try not to edit it so if I make some mistakes or if I drop things don't worry um, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to use these to make a tagine. So I've got a tagine pot. You can use a casserole dish. It comes out just as good. So basically what we're going to do, and get a spoon. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just add some of the rice. Now I'm not going to make as bigger tagine as I normally would. So I'm just going to add some of that rice. Okay. Then I'm going to add some of the vegetables. So a little bit of each vegetable. Okay. And as I say, all that's on these vegetables is some rapeseed oil. So really simple. Okay, so, so much for not editing, I actually uh, ran out of storage when I was doing that. So the next bit, the tagine paste. Basically, it's made up from the Ras Al Anu that I was showing you earlier. It's just, it's an easier, quicker way of doing it. Um, and good ingredients, so it's, it's fine to use. So basically, you take a big spoon of that, okay? And then mix it in with those tomatoes. So you're mixing it in. And chop those tomatoes up so because you want to get the flavors the whole way through now when we stopped Marie who's actually videoing this for me actually asked me what's the difference between a tagine pot and a regular casserole dish and the difference being is the lid pretty much because the way that it's structured it the air can keep circulating so it's you slow cook it so it's a wonderful way of slow cooking Okay, so basically all we're doing is we are literally mixing that in. Okay, 
Now I'm doing this first because the tagine will take the longest, okay? So normally with the tagine, if you're putting everything in raw, it normally takes about three hours. But this way, because you've already cooked the vegetables and you've cooked the rice, then basically it only takes about an hour. So I'll put that into the oven, okay? And you'll get all those flavours in there. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that, so it's got a bit more in there. Okay. And that's it. Simple as that. I'll put the lid on. As I say, you can use a casserole dish. Absolutely fine. Um, it will still come out um, a lovely dish. So, what temperature is that going in at current? That's going in 160. Okay. Right, so that's your first dish. That's the tagine. It's as simple as that. You've already got the ingredients made up. All of these things you can actually put into Tupperware dishes. So you can put all your vegetables in one Tupperware dish. You can put your avocado in another. You can put your rice in another. Your chickpeas in another and your salsa in another. So that's, you just take out the Tupperware and basically use the ingredients bit by bit each evening to make up a different dish. So that's the first dish. So, second dish is going to be a curry. And again, curries, a lot of people will buy, you can buy the um, curry in, in the jar. Make sure if you are getting one, make sure that you're getting one with good ingredients, okay? So what I would always say, when you're looking on the ingredients list, you don't wanna see sugar or salt up the top. You don't wanna see lots of names of um, chemicals in there that you don't recognize the names of or you don't know what it means. So basically, the fresher the ingredients, the more natural the ingredients, the better. So there are some that are okay, so you can use them. What I tend to do is I just use a very simple curry powder Okay, so I've got a wok here. I'm gonna turn the wok on. So I put that up at the highest. Basically, I'm just gonna put some of the curry powder into the wok dry, and then I'm gonna add some ghee. And ghee is clarified butter. Um, basically, what that means is that it's already been cooked, and what it does is ghee doesn't burn at a low temperature. So it's normally when I'm cooking, I either use ghee, or I use rapeseed oil, or I use coconut oil. I've actually got a really good brand there called Coco Bran Oil, and it's uh, coconut and bran, rice bran oil, which is a really, really good one. But normally for curries, I normally use the ghee. It's just traditional with curries. Very nearly lost my vegetables there. So it's just traditional with curries, and um, it just gives it that traditional flavor. So, again. Get a spoon. Okay. So, this is a hot curry paste, so I'm not going to put massive amounts in. So, I'm just going to put that in the pan. And as I say, I just want to let that kind of roast off a little bit first you'll start smelling the flavors I know you can't smell them from where you are but you'll start smelling the flavors of that stronger and you'll smell different flavors coming out the more it cooks off so to start off with if you smell it from the actual jar it smells very hot and spicy but once you start cooking that off you can smell the sweeter flavors and, and coming through Good spoon of ghee. One thing I would always say is when you're cooking or when you're making things, 
use butter, use ghee, use rapeseed oil, you know, don't be using um, chemically made products. Use as natural as possible. It's far better to actually use the likes of butter and you'll get the benefits from that, but use it in moderation. You know, you don't need to be using um, large amounts. I mean, I know there's a good bit of geek on in there, but that's because we're going to be putting all the vegetables in and everything on top. So it's all about using good, good, good produce. So, back to the vegetables. see that's melted okay so all I'm gonna do again add a little bit of each vegetable okay Coat all those with your curry, powder and ghee. Okay. And let them cook off for a little while. Just let them get the flavours going through everything. All of these meals are really, really quick to do. Um, as you can see, the preparation, that took a little while earlier. It wasn't particularly long cooking them. Um, but once you've done that, you have them for about four or five days inside in the fridge and you basically just take them out bit by bit and use them in each meal. So I'm going to leave that away for a minute and go on to the next one. So let's see what was the next oh yeah so I'm going to heat the soup in a while I'll do that afterwards. So the next one is what's called a taco bowl. Taco bowls are all the rage at the moment on Facebook and they're a great idea. And it's actually what gave me the idea for doing this because all of these ingredients are typically used in taco bowls. So you can chop up these vegetables a little bit smaller if you want to. I'm not going to at the moment, but you can put them in a bit smaller if you want. So basically what you're doing with a taco bowl is you are first of all putting in some rice. Good job, I've got a lot of spoons. So, you basically you put in a bit of rice. Okay. You put in a few of the vegetables. Okay, so you're putting them all in little segments around the bowl. Next bit then, put in some of your salsa. Then you put in some of your avocado. Then you can also use hummus. You can make the hummus with chickpeas, tahini, garlic and oil. Um, or you can, there are some really good brands. I get my hummus, um, if I'm buying it, I get it from a place here in Castle Bar. Um, called Cafe Rua. They do really wonderful ingredients and they've got really lovely local fresh produce. So then you would put some of the hummus there on the side. Just gonna get rid of that burnt one. Okay. And then just sprinkle some of the chickpeas okay and that's basically what a taco bowl is what you can do with that as well is if you eat fish or chicken or meat you can basically put some meat or chicken or fish with that as well so you can have it as alongside it but it's a really filling tasty dish you've got loads of different flavors in there and they all go together and um, so that's that right so back to the curry Okay. 
So again, simple tin of tomatoes. And you're basically putting the tomatoes in, the pan, in on top. Now, if you like your curries a little bit milder, you can really, really easily add in a tin of uh, coconut milk and it just gives it that milder flavor. So just because these are Indian herbs, curry spices, doesn't mean you can't add in the coconut milk. Okay. Now, what I'm just gonna let that cook off there for a while. So, the next dish, one of the final ones, let me just move these over a little bit. Is using, now I've only got a little one, so you can get a food processor. I've got the little Kenwood one, and this works perfectly fine for this. What I'm going to do is make a veggie burger from some of the ingredients that we've got here. So we've got chickpeas. I'm only gonna make one veggie burger because I've only got a small food processor. So I'm just putting a few of these in here, okay? And then I'm going to add, use this I'm gonna use some of this. I'm gonna add some of the onion, okay? Some of the mushroom. A little bit of that aubergine. And then I'm going to put some of this rice in there as well. Okay. And just a little bit of that hummus. So that's basically what I'm putting in there. And then I liquidize it together and that will come together as a, as a, a patty. So what you do then once you have the patty made is you then basically you put it together and you put it in the frying pan and make a small veggie bag with it. So this is going to get a little noisy. The great thing is because I've put the ras al on the chickpeas already you're going to get the flavour from that in the burger as well. This is why you don't do it live. Okay, so. Grab this. All you're doing there with this is you're making it into a burger shape, okay? some of the rice again so again it's using all the ingredients that you've cooked up during the week and then you're basically in your curry and you've got a nice curry then that you can use for the you can actually if you make if it's one person in the house you can use the rest of the curry you can actually put it in the freezer heat it up again the next week one thing I would say is if you're reheating food, reheat it on the hob or reheat it in the oven, don't use the microwave. It, uh, personally, I feel that the, 
microwave heats at way too high a temperature and so it basically it destroys the goodness that's in the food because it's too hot. So I'm going to put that to one side. And I'm going to get frying pan out. Now again I'm going to use the rapeseed oil for this so just put a bit of rapeseed oil in the pan. Now I want to turn that down, that heat down a little bit. I don't want it too hot because I want it to be able to keep the shape and I don't want it burning. I want to be able to leave it for a little while in the pan. Okay, so it's just an egg slice. And I'm just going to put it in that way. And I'm just going to let that cook off for a while. So basically with the veggie burger, what you're gonna do, that will cook off and it'll brown on either side. And what you're gonna do then, you can either use a bun, um, or if you are um, gluten free or have any issues with wheat or gluten or any of the different grains, what you can do is you can actually use two big portobello mushrooms. So you can fry them off as well, use them as the bun on either side. And again, you can use the um, avocado and the salsa with the burger. So you can put that in with the burger as well. So again, it's using all the same ingredients. So, while that burger is doing, we're nearly there. Just shows you how quick it is to do all the different things once you've got the preparation done. So while that's doing, I'm gonna turn that soup on at the back, okay? So sometimes you make up a soup or you buy a soup and you think, oh, I don't really fancy soup tonight. I'm fancy something a bit more interesting or a bit more filling or with a bit more texture in it. So one thing I've done over the years is if I've got leftover rice or if I've got leftover vegetables or anything like that then I'll put it into the soup and it just gives it a totally different dimension. So like that with the soup you will find a spoon. So grab some of your rice Put it in. Some of your vegetables. Okay. And you can pretty much use whatever vegetables you fancy. I mean, I've used, as I say, sweet potatoes, and I've used um, carrots, and peppers, and mushrooms, and onions, and aubergines, and things like that. But you can pretty much, any vegetables that you can roast, you can use. and. Uh, normally I would say don't put the herbs and spices on the vegetables and um, just use the oil because you're going to be putting the flavours in with other things so it just means you can use them in lots of different dishes whereas if you put too much flavour on them they'll affect the flavour of what you're putting them into so basically with that what you're going to do and let that heat up This soup was a celeriac soup. So it's celeriac and parsnip, and I think I put some pear in it. But again, any soup you can use. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that cook off a bit so it thins out because it's been in the freezer. Um, and what I'll do then at the end with the soup is I'll use the chickpeas again. And as I say, because the chickpeas have been dried out in the oven, they're, they're almost crispy, like croutons. So what you do then is once you've put the soup into your dish, you just sprinkle a few of the chickpeas on top. It gives a bit of crunch, gives a bit of something interesting to it, and um, that's the soup. So you could do, um, I often do a porridge bread or porridge muffins. Again, really, really simple. Um, I've put the recipe up on the page before. And they're basically, it's just porridge oats, yogurt, um, a little bit of bread soda and an egg. So very simple. And you can add all sorts into it to give it different flavours. So you can see there, that's getting a bit crispy on top. You can see it's getting a bit more formed. So I'm going to leave them cook off. And as I say, all of these things you can make up. It didn't take that long to make. The salsa is great if you're having salads. You can put it in with your salad as well. 
Um, you know, everything is really simple. The rice, you can use the rice to make egg fried rice. That's another dish you could make. So you just basically put the rice and some whisk up some eggs and put some vegetables through it. Again, whichever vegetables, um, and put those in the pan, heat them up, and then add the egg at the last minute. Um, and so it's so many different things that you can do, so many versatile ways of using it. So I'm probably going to stop it there for a minute and edit it because I don't want you having to wait here while these things are cooking. And once this is cooked, we'll come back. Okay, so I uh, finished off the burger. Basically, it only took about 10 minutes. Um, it browns on either side. While the burger was finishing off, I put the two mushrooms in the pan with it to cook them off. So you've got one mushroom underneath, you've got the second mushroom as the bun on top, and then you've got some salsa and some of your avocado to go with it. So you can make a really nice dish with that. You can even use some of the sweet potatoes that were cooked in the roast dish, heat them up. Um, a way of, I mentioned about heating the rice and everything earlier, so a way of doing that is to use a big dish like this and put some water in it and then get another Pyrex dish and put that in side in it so you've got what's called a bain marie and basically put your food put your either your rice or your cooked vegetables in there and what you want to do is you want to heat them quite quickly you're not trying to cook them again so you want to put it at a high heat um, you can use some tin foil to cover it to stop it burning um, so that the heat gets the whole way through so that's the burger the soup is really simple. You can use tomato soup, you can use vegetable soup, you can use all sorts of different soups. So that's now got some rice through it, it's got some vegetables through it, it's got the chickpeas on top, it's got a great flavour off it. You then got, this is again, back to the taco bowl, um, really simple. I didn't mention earlier that you actually, the rice and the vegetables, reheat them so you've got something hot in there as well it doesn't matter that you've got the cold elements to the dish because they go together really nicely so heat the rice and heat the vegetables you can do them together in one dish in a bain marie um, as i say try not to use uh, microwaves where possible and then the curry really really simple really tasty very very quick these are all meals that you can make very very quickly it's just the preparation at the beginning okay um, so I'm just going to quickly check on the tagine and see where that is. Um, while I'm doing that, they mentioned the ghee earlier and the curry powder. So both of these um, I got in a, it's the Indian shop in Lindenhall Street in Castle Bar. Any of, um, any of those spices or anything like ghee, your, your best place to go is a shop that sells um, those kind of ingredients specifically. The ghee used to be able to get it in the big supermarkets and find it difficult these days. So again, as I say, um, it was in the Indian Pakistani shop in Kasabar on Lindenhall Street that I got them, but there normally is one um, nearby. Sometimes you can get it in the health shops um, if you don't have something like that around where you live. So just gonna quickly check on this tagine. I don't think it will be ready just yet. I'm just going to have a look. So, I don't know, maybe. It's nearly anyway. So just to show you what it should look like, okay? It's a matter of everything just comes together, all the, everything cooks in together. So I'm going to just get my wash. So basically you have all the rice, all the vegetables, the tomatoes, that paste has gone through there as well. And again, with a tagine, that could probably cook off a little bit more. There's still a little bit too much liquid, so I'm not going to put that in at the moment. So once that's thickened up a little bit more and it's not so, so much liquid there, then basically all you do is you take a nice bowl of that, put it in to a nice looking bowl, make your food look nice. And again, you can put those dried chickpeas on the top. You can put nuts and seeds on it. You can do whatever you want with it. So use different things. Um, and that's it. That's basically how to make five different meals with five core, not ingredients, but mixtures. And um, they're all really, really simple to make. There's nothing expensive there. 
all really simple and I think you probably agree that each one of those meals is completely different there's not anything similar about any of them and they're all completely different tastes something that would be interesting to eat any evening that you come in from work or if you have kids um, and it's just yeah it's really simple so it's all about keeping it simple keeping it natural and it keeps you healthy so thanks for joining and if anyone's got any questions feel free to contact me I'm always happy to answer any questions I love questions so that's it from me so bye